The marine digger's bucket is dipped into the barge's hold and comes up with a grab load of precious landfill fodder. Then the bulldozers flatten out the waste materials, passing back and forth over the fill as they level and compact the refuse. While Staten Island has long been known, even notorious, for the Fresh Kills landfill site, during Hurricane Sandy, Fresh Kills played a new and different role for the area. Fresh Kills is no longer an active landfill, and it's being developed into what will be one of the largest urban parks in the country. These man-made hills and fields actually acted as wetland buffers for surrounding neighborhoods, a critical asset in the face of rising sea levels. I'm Michael Kimmelman, architecture critic of the New York Times. If this new park, a mecca and model for global experts in landfill reclamation, can get past the regulatory and financial hurdles, it could become a post-industrial success story like Manhattan's High Line. I took a tour of Fresh Kills with Eloise Hirsch, the park's administrator for the New York City Parks Department. Here we are in as about as bucolic a place as you could possibly imagine in, as it were, the middle of New York City. Mm -hmm. With the sound of birds and trees and streams. It smells like grasses and trees and it's, it smells like open meadows. It does. I have to say it does. Where are we, Eloise? We are in what will someday be South Park in the Fresh Kills former landfill, what was once the world's largest landfill. How big is Fresh Kills, actually? It's 2,200 acres, which 2, is... 2,200. What does that mean, yeah? Which is, well, it's almost three times the size of Central Park. This was the city's most notorious garbage dump. Yeah. It was. You can't overestimate the scars it left on people in Staten Island. I just want to ask you, when I say Fresh Kills, what do you think of? Dump. Garbage dump. A stink. <laughs> A horrible stench. Nasty summertime stinkness. Where we are is um, the entrance to the whole Fresh Kills complex off the Arthur Kill Waterway, where the barges of, of garbage used to be brought in. Over here is the West Mound, which is where the World Trade Center materials are. It's, uh, it's really a kind of ruin, aren't we? We're on this old dock. Some of this we'll be able to keep. We certainly want to somehow keep the feel of this. The site was officially closed in 2001. That we began talking about what might become of it in 2000 as a park. We're in 2012. What's the delay? When you have a site that's as complicated as this one, that has as long a history as this one, um, that people have very negative feelings about, you're going to find government being worried about liability issues. And so because of that, we have to be super careful about making sure we deal with all the regulations and deal with all of the safety issues. So I would say in about three years, there's going to be a section where people can freely come and go. This site is actually under the jurisdiction of different organizations. You're from the Parks Department. There's also sanitation. The sanitation department and we will be working together for the next 25, 30 years. Mm. I mean, this is still the sanitation department site. And if it were opened as a park, would you go? And uh, I guess it's a good idea as long as like none of the radiation or whatever was built underneath there, whatever they were dumping underneath doesn't come up, I guess, and it's safe for people to stand on top of and not get cancer, then yeah, I guess that's good. Oh yeah, I would definitely go. I don't think it's healthy. I would love to have a park, yeah. As long as it doesn't smell. I don't know, it's a little scary. This place is completely safe because of the engineering that's gone into it and the compliance with all the environmental regulations. Right, but I'm sure people will say, okay. yeah, yeah, she says yeah. it's very safe. But yeah. if my five-year-old comes here and starts digging through the dirt, can you get to the garbage? Can no, you can't, get to, you can't get to the garbage. You <laughs> right. can't get to the garbage. There is two and a half feet of soil that is cleaner than is in most people's backyards in the city of New York. Right. There's two and a half feet of that between you and a very heavy, um, industrial grade liner. The garbage is, for all intents and purposes, uh, irrelevant for the future of this site. Decomposing trash makes methane gas, makes landfill gas, half of which is methane. And we harvest all of that. The Department of Sanitation has a very terrific system of pipes that run throughout the site. You see, the, you see them around yes. as well. Yes. And so 
all of the gas is harvested. It goes to a processing plant on site. And in fact, um, it is plugged into National Grid's pipeline. It heats the equivalent of 22,000 homes on Staten Island. The, the gas that comes from the here? The gas that comes from here. So this place is Does already- Does it smell? Is it dangerous? No, it's not. What have been the plans to uh, make this park uh, open and accessible and, and renovated for the public? Well, as the park was closing, um, the Municipal Arts Society... We're talking back, back in 2000. Which, yes. The, the Municipal Arts Society went to then Mayor Rudy Giuliani and said, you know, this is the last time the city is going to get this much land. You should not blow this opportunity. You hmm. should have an international competition. You should see what really could be the highest and best use of this place. And James Corner Field Operations won that competition. Here in New York. Yeah. Here in New York. So people need to know, uh, Corner worked on the High Line. Yes. This reminds me a little of a High Line site in that it was considered a blight and maybe by many people still is, mm -hmm. uh, and disused site. Mm -hmm. And then once it was transformed and open, people suddenly discovered it as a great asset, in fact, a, a thing of beauty in the city. Yep. Do birds come? And uh, what, kind of, what kind of wildlife is there here? All kinds of wildlife has come back. It used to be the wildlife here was seagulls. Everybody remembers the seagulls. For the garbage. But now, but now, um, all kinds of raptors, all kinds of meadow birds. This oh. is the largest expanse of open meadow in this whole region. The Audubon mm. Society has said this is one of the greatest bird watching places in the city. It's uh, extraordinary to think that we're again in the middle of New York City as it were. It seems like a very peaceful and somehow restful and quiet place. I'm hoping that New Yorkers will come to see it that way and come to experience it that way.